Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Wong here with Faucet Marketing and uh, welcome to today's masterclass. I have a very special guest. Uh, his name is Shash Singh. He's the founder of Lynx Digital. Uh, he's built a seven figure agents, agency um, and driven eight figures in the e-com space using YouTube ads. So today he's gonna be sharing some of that expertise with you and the um, some ways that you can just start incorporating it into your um, into your business and help build redundancy if all you're running right now is Facebook ads. So welcome, Shash. Hey guys, uh, really happy to be here. Thanks, Brandon, for inviting me on here. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy to share kind of a few things I've learned and hopefully help you guys diversify from Facebook. Awesome, man. Out of curiosity, how, how long have you been um, doing ads on YouTube? On YouTube? Um, it's been over five, like five and a half years. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Very so cool. I actually have a presentation ready. So um, I guess I can share my screen and get started. Basically, I want to give you a little bit of background as to how this presentation kind of came together. So Brandon, actually, he posted in my group a while back and he talked about how you know Facebook shut him down with his business manager. But within a few days, he was actually able to start running on YouTube and start generating leads at I think it was like a cheaper or the same cost per lead. And basically you're able to kind of get your leads tap back on again very, very fast. So yeah, basically Brandon reached out to me asking if he could help out train you guys. And I thought, yeah, let's do this. So basically the point of this presentation is I want to teach you how to generate epic results with YouTube ads for your clients while getting paid for it, right? Uh, the goal is to diversify from Facebook as a service into YouTube ads as well. And this basically allows you to, number one, have diversification. So if Facebook shuts down your account, you're okay. And number two, it's also an upsell, a very easy upsell. So quick little background on me. Who is the Shash guy? Uh, my name is Shash, run Lynx Digital Agency. We've generated over $30 million for agency clients, have helped over 175 training clients with YouTube ads. And we've worked with clients like Kino Body, Amazing Sewing Machine, Helium 10, Indestructible Shoes, Peter Peru, and many others. And so basically the point of that is that, hey, I'm not just uh, some random guy. I, I have some experience with YouTube ads. So the content here is based on pure practice and not based on, you know, I'm a guru that like wants to sell a YouTube ads course, right? Like our bread and butter is running ads and we, you know, frequently spend a million dollars or more um, on basically YouTube ads. So the problem that we're seeing nowadays with, uh, and this is a problem all of my friends who are on Facebook are telling me about, is that number one, ROAS is starting to go down on Facebook as every advertiser is using Facebook ads. Number two is Facebook constantly suspends, bans ad accounts, which kind of sucks because, you know, you guys, um, you're trying to get results for your clients, you, and it's just having an account shut down or bans, it just sucks. And I've had the same thing with my Facebook ads. It just always seems to happen and it just slows down any progress because you make some progress, you start getting some results and then you have to start over. So it's really, really sucks. And clients don't stick around when their accounts start getting banned and suspended because they're not making money. Uh, the no third thing is the huge amounts of competition, right? Like every agency out there offers, offers Facebook ads while for YouTube ads, there's far fewer agencies and far fewer agencies that have a lot of experience. So there is an opportunity in whatever local space you're in, whether it might be, you know, let's say dentists or it might be lead gen or insurance, there's definitely a lot of blue ocean opportunity there for YouTube ads. Now the solution is that YouTube ads is still less competitive in many niches, right? Like there are some niches where YouTube ads is very competitive like info products, but in e-commerce and local, uh, it's very non-competitive. And so YouTube ads is still like, it's a big blue ocean opportunity. And even for info products, it's extremely lucrative. Um, and very, very good. So account suspensions are extremely rare. I will say that a chance of a YouTube or a Google account getting suspended or, uh, you know, basically is maybe 1 20th of a Facebook account getting suspended. And then the chances of getting a Google account back are significantly higher. Getting a Google ads account back is way higher. And then there's obviously far less agencies offering YouTube ads as a service. So if you're able to start generating results with YouTube ads, you have an easy upsell for clients that you're already, you know, sell, selling Facebook ads to or uh, Google ads to, and you basically have the opportunity to become a multi-channel agency. And that allows you to keep clients on for longer periods, because if you're running three traffic sources for them and doing all their paid ads, 
getting rid of you is extremely painful. On the other hand, if you're just doing Facebook ads for them, they can find another Facebook ad agency, like, you know, just snap of the finger, they can find another one. That's, you know, and it's, uh, it's one of those things we've seen is multi-channel keeps clients around longer. Now, obviously the big question is what products and offers work with YouTube ads? Now, there are some gurus out there that will say that every offer works with YouTube ads. That's not true. Um, you want to be very specific. With local, what we've seen is most lead gen in local works well. Solar has worked well, mark gauge, insurance. Um, basically, with local, it's pretty much anything that works on Facebook works pretty well with YouTube ads. Uh, there's less competition in local as very few agencies and business owners actually use YouTube ads. Nowadays, you're starting to get more solar lead gen and insurance lead gen, but it's still not that common, right? There's still It's still basically far less competitive than Facebook. Now, with e-commerce, so those of you who are in the e-commerce space, um, we have very specific criteria for what e-commerce clients we take on. And the first thing you want to look at is, do they at least have a reasonable, acceptable cost per purchase? For us, we want to make sure they're able to pay $40 to acquire a customer. Now, this is the USA market. Obviously, if you're selling worldwide, this will depend. If you're selling in Europe, this will vary. But the, in the US market, we want to make sure they have a $40 CPA. Now, this may go down or up depending on conversion rates, but typically Facebook does well with these products that are cheap and, you know, maybe $20, $15 CPAs. However, with YouTube, where it excels is in slightly higher priced products and really scaling that up and, you know, being able to spend five, ten thousand $10,000 a day. However, what YouTube does not excel at is selling low ticket e-commerce products. Um, that's not the platform for, for that. And you want to have a high conversion rate on the store, typically we're aiming for 3%. Obviously, if a product costs like $200, you're going to expect that conversion rate to be lower. But the gist of it is you should be able to pay a dollar to dollar fifty per click and still be reasonably profitable, right? Just because you can get cheaper clicks for sure. And you usually do cheaper clicks, but for longevity reasons, I want, I want clients that can pay dollar to dollar fifty in the e-commerce world and still be profitable. Obviously, in the info product world, those cost per clicks are higher, especially if you're looking at something like Amazon, FBA, and, you know, like drop shipping, right? Like in those niches, you can often have $4 cost per clicks or $5 cost per clicks, but it can still be very lucrative. We have a client that does over a million dollars a month targeting that whole Amazon niche. And even though they're paying $4 to $5 cost per click, they're just making money over hand over fist. So um, it's very high in dead traffic. Now, oops, sorry. Now for courses and info products, right? What you want to look for are webinar funnels that are higher priced, right? 997 is the minimum of that range, uh, or sales call funnels. And sales call funnels typically, you know, they, it's a VSL, they jump on a call and you sell them something that's maybe like a few thousand dollars or five thousand dollars, six thousand dollars. So that's high ticket stuff. And lower ticket funnels can work, but only for front end lead generation. So I wouldn't, what I wouldn't do is just have like a $29 ebook, right? Now, these numbers can vary because these are based on make money online. Obviously, if you're in the fitness niche, perhaps, you know, you, you can get away with maybe a $97 product, right? Instead of a 997 because the cost per clicks are going to be cheaper. But in the make, make money online niche, that's what we try to go for is 997 and over on webinars. And for sales call funnels, obviously it's going to be, you know, probably at least $2,000, but usually like $3,000 to $6,000. And yeah, we just avoid like super low ticket stuff does not um, really work with YouTube ad costs, right? Like, uh, again, Facebook is better for lower ticket, but I, I even with lower ticket, like you can't really scale that much on Facebook, right? Like Facebook is just really good at finding like a very small audience for a very specific offer, even if that offer is like super cheap and being able to deliver that efficiency. While YouTube, what it's better at is scale, but with an offer that works to a somewhat broader audience, right? So with YouTube, you can scale to very big numbers um if your funnel converts now now let's say you're looking at this and you're like oh yeah i have a client who could work with this right if you do have a client who you think could work with these criteria comment uh, comment in the in the comments so i can maybe perhaps give you guys uh some niche specific feedback as to how you could actually convince them to try their doing youtube ads um so while i wait for that so the first thing to do is if you're already running an agency which i'm assuming a lot of you guys are uh, really, you can just upsell them, right? Just tell them, hey, we want to try YouTube ads. Uh, it's working really well in this niche. Um, you could do something where you just charge them extra for it. If they're pushed back, 
you perhaps give them a one month or two month free trial on it. And, you know, that's one way to do it. Like make it easy, get your first case study, get your first results so that then you can start selling it. And another option is let's say they pay for ad spend and you get paid on performance, right? So um, there's basically like that whole um, pay for performance. So like, you know, they pay for the spend, but if you generate results, then you get a slice of those results and you get paid on that. So that's also an easy way to convince clients because that it's like risk free for them other than the ad spend. So the first thing is to really get that first case study on, under your belt. Now, uh, Brian had a question, the SaaS what work well on YouTube? Yes, it absolutely does. There are a lot of SaaS like Grammarly, uh, Monday.com that sell with YouTube ads. I've worked with Helium 10, which is a SaaS that also we sold uh, with YouTube ads. So the thing with SaaS is you just need to make sure your front end offer is expensive enough and converts better, better converts well enough um, that you can actually liquidate the traffic cost. Because the thing with SaaS is you, let's say you are paying, uh, you know, you're basically getting a customer and you don't get the money back from the customer for like six to eight months, right? Like let's say they stay on six to eight months. So you need to figure out a way of either you're willing to go two or three months in the hole, or you need to figure out a way to like bundle in a few things at the at, in the front end so you can actually liquidate that cost, right? So um, that's something important to keep in mind about software. Uh, and with software, obviously, you know, the companies that have venture capital can be much more aggressive in acquisition. Cool. So real estate, home improvement, yeah, I've heard real estate um, definitely seems like something that would work. Home improvement for sure. Dental, absolutely. Uh, mortgage, a lot of people are doing well with YouTube ads for mortgage. So yeah, all of these niches, I, I think YouTube ads could work well for you guys. I know insurance is a big one. I have a buddy who's, uh, who generates 200 to 300 leads a day in insurance in Canada itself, just Canadian insurance, and he sells those leads for like $30, $40 a pop. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually, I put up an interview on my YouTube channel. Um, I released it yesterday where, he, he goes into what he does. So yeah, you like you can definitely get results in those niches. So, okay, let's say you get your first client, right? And your first client is like interested and they want to go get ahead. Now, the first thing you want to figure out is how are you going to script your first video app, video app, right? It's really important because the same creative that works on Facebook doesn't work on YouTube. And the reason for that is Number one on YouTube, you don't have the text, right? Like Facebook, you can have like that whole, you know, like basically text portion of the ad, which can do a lot of the heavy lifting. And then you can add an image, you can add a video. So there's like a little bit uh, of flexibility of that. On YouTube, on the other hand, it's all video and the video has to work. So the first thing, and I'll send you guys the link to the swipe folder um, after the call. I, we can, or maybe I can even like, basically with YouTube ads, you really just need to get started with testing and even testing, you know, basically you don't need to be perfectionist, right? You want to get started with whatever you think will work. So the first video ad, it's going to be imperfect. Good enough is good enough. That's all that basically matters, right? Like as long as you can break even, you you prove the concept, you're on the right path, right? So the way you script and YouTube ad is there are def different phases of it, right? So there's usually like a hook portion, which is like you grab her attention. So for example, let's take an example, um, carpet cleaning niche, right? So the hook would be something that grabs people's attention who are in need of carpet cleaning. So it could be, for example, hey, Austin homeowners, are you, uh, do you constantly feel that your carpets are dusty and cause you to cough and make you, uh, you know, just feel sick? right? Something like that, right? Like you dig into the pain point, you say that as the first thing in the video to grab their attention, right? And that's the hook, right? You want to grab your ideal audience's attention. And then the qualification slash freeze is you want to call them out and basically you want to get the people who are interested and keep them watching the video. So you want to say, hey, um, if you're, if you're not, if you're not somebody who owns a carpet, just skip this video, right? This video isn't for you. And then you obviously, from there, you have, you got the attention of your ideal audience. They know that, Hey, this guy's talking to me. I own a carpet. And then you tell them, okay, Hey, listen, did you know that dirty carpets cause a lot of asthma and a lot of health issues? And the only way to really resolve this issue and prevent carpets from hurting your health while still keeping your house looking really pretty is to get them cleaned once every two weeks. 
Um, and you basically describe the problem a bit, and then you go into your service and tell them, hey, if you would like to get a free carpet cleaning or get your first carpet cleaning for 50% off straight to your house, we'll be there tomorrow, we'll be there today, then go click on the link below, and that will be the first call to action where you basically, you know, once you've described what you're offering, you've built up the problem and you've given them the solution, then you'll give them a call to action. And then after that first call to action, and this is a major mistake I see, people just have one call to action. You wanna have at least two call to action, sometimes even three. So after the first call to action, we'll actually have a social proof section which says, hey, so if, uh, and it's just don't, uh, don't just trust me. Here's like, you know, like, uh, here's our Yelp reviews. So, and then screen share a bunch of Yelp reviews. Here's our, you know, kind of our Google Maps reviews. You can see that over 75 homeowners have given us 4.8 stars and we have a money back guarantee that, you know, if you're not satisfied, your carpet gets, you know, cleaned for free. And then you have the second call to action, which is like, hey, once again, click the link above or below to get your first free carpet cleaning or something of that nature. So that's kind of the gist of it, right? Like you have these different phases, you wanna grab their attention, you wanna basically make sure you're talking to the right person, describe the problem, tell them the solution, tell them to click, give them more meat, give them more basically social proof and results so that you know people who are on the fence will wanna click. And then you have the secondary call to action. So then they basically click again. Now, Trevor, um says will an animated text video with voiceover work or does it have to be a live person so that's a great question and that leads to my next part of uh, of basically what i want to chat about so basically with the video right there's a few ways you can do this the first is you could literally take stock footage from sites like envato.com uh, storyblocks.com and then you can get a voiceover on Fiverr or Upwork for maybe like 50, 150, I think it's usually 100 to 150 dollars and basically have a voiceover person narrate it while you kind of show the, the scenes from that are basically in line with the script. So you would create a script and then you would also create like a kind of a scene board, right? Like, oh, this is the scene we want to show. Um, now, that's one way to do it. This other way to do it is to do it live, a live person. And literally that could be you in front of the camera. Like one of the guys, in our course, Marius, who does solar, uh, solar lead gen and mortgages and finance in Australia, what he did to figure out his ads is he actually shot videos of himself. So he would be in front of the, the video. He would say the script and go through the script. And then he would basically, um, so that's like one really easy way to do it, right? Like basically you can literally do it yourself or somebody in your office or the other option is uh, get a voiceover and then add in some footage. If the client has any video footage, that's also great. The key is here to basically make sure the video footage is engaging and gets their attention. And I also ha highly recommend hiring, uh, using Upwork.com to hire a video editor to pull this together, right? Um, usually at our agency, what we do is we have a video editing team that just makes these ads, that edits them, that creates variations, et cetera. I wanted to quickly ch chat about e-com. Um, I don't know if anybody here does e-com, but I wanted to touch upon this because I know it's popular niche. If you're in e-commerce, the one of the keys is that you kind of have to really show them the product, but also guide them through it, right? On Facebook, you see a lot of these e-com ads that just kind of show people using the product, but they don't actually um, have anybody guiding it, right? So in for these e-com ads, at the minimum, you need a voiceover, but typically having a character in the video that kind of basically goes over the problem then provides a solution is really great. And you do need something that's fast paced. And that's really important, having that guide character, like somebody who just takes them through the, the you know, why this pro product was created, what's the problem it solves, and what the next steps are. Uh, really great ads are Harmon Brothers ads. So if you go on to their website, which is Harmon Brothers, if you just Google them, you'll see a lot of really great e-commerce YouTube ads. So they, though they really know how to do awesome e-com YouTube ads. So with an e-com, uh, for e-com, if this is, if basically you have a, a very simple formula for doing an e-com ad is you literally take product footage, influencer footage, user footage, and combine that with a voiceover. And then you can get a voiceover artist on Fiverr for $50. Um, and then you follow the same script I kind of had, I showed you guys like a few minutes before. And um, yeah, now a few things to remember is you wanna tell them exactly what to do after they click, right? 
So you want to tell them, hey, after like basically you click through, you know, there will be a little form that you need to fill out to get your free carpet cleaner, you quick the cleaning, the right? And I showed you guys like a few minutes before. The other thing is you want to tell them to click above or below because sometimes the link will be above, sometimes the link will be below. So usually that's uh, that's a good, you know, general call to action. And then you can also edit in arrows that point towards the call to action. So on in Google, there's like an ad preview tool that you can use when you're setting up the ad and it will actually show you what the ad looks like and you'll want to make, make sure you use that. So how do you shoot your ad? Now, first thing is if you're, you can use your phone so you can do selfie style and shoot selfie style and that's totally cool. However, you want to avoid camera shake or background noise. Um, I believe this is going to be recorded. So don't worry about that guys. So make sure to avoid camera shake or background noise, right? If you're using a camera, um, try to use a quality mic. So if you're recording with an actual camera, I like to use the road. They have like the lapel mics. You can have directional mics, et cetera. And then you can use Upwork for video editors. And you want to make sure if you're shooting the ad, right? And you, if you're actually the person that give yourself a couple hours to get the first ad, a video, right? And some easy variations, right? Because you want to be testing different variations is you could literally have different intro lines. So you can change out the four, you can have four intro lines and then you have one main hook. So you record the four intro lines separately and then you record the hook just once. And that way you can have like four to five variations. Um, so Trevor had a question. Do you create one version from desktop and one for mobile? You can do that depending on, uh, so on mobile, you can also have ads that have slightly different dimensions. So we basically have our editing team sometimes create different versions for mobile and desktops, but you don't need to do it as much when you're starting out, right? Like that's more an advanced optimization. When you're starting out, you can kind of have the same uh, video for desktop and mobile, right? Just not overcomplicating it. So once you actually have an ad done, what you do is you would go into YouTube here and you would actually upload the video, but you would basically upload it as unlisted. So instead, once you upload it here, there'll be an option to either make it unlisted or public or private. You don't want it public usually unless you want to really show your ad off and you don't want it private because then you won't be able to use it in your campaign. You will just want it as unlisted. And then obviously the ad preview tool, I kind of mentioned that. So what the ad preview tool is, is when you're actually setting up the ad, you can uh, basically preview the ad if you click on it. So you can see like these, this is a discovery ad. So it shows where it shows up. Let me show you like a in-stream ad, one second. One of the things that kind of threw me off is that you're in Google Ads Manager, but it's YouTube ads. So like if you've never run YouTube ads before, it yeah. is, YouTube is a Google property. So they're, they're, they run. Exactly. The yes. So it is, a, it is a Google property. So that's something to keep in mind. This is all through Google. So you can kind of, you have this, like you can preview the tool and you can even preview it on the desktop. Um, you need to make sure you're basically, and then you can even copy the link to send it. So. You can preview it on desktop like this and then copy the link and send it to mobile. So that way it allows you to kind of preview things easily. Now setting up tracking, right? Now this is, this is a, this is the part that a lot of people struggle with. That's um, a tricky, tricky part for me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's very tricky. Um, so what I suggest is using Google Tag Manager. Um, it's like the best solution I've found. So what Google Tag Manager is, is you know how there's like all these different pixels. There's a Facebook pixel, then there's like the Google, they have a bunch of different things. They have Google Analytics, then you have the Google, you know, basically ads kind of uh, pixel. So Google Tag Manager, what it does, it allows you to add kind of conversion pixels and pixels onto different pages in your website without having to actually change the hard code on it. So what you do is you install Google Tag Manager once, and then you can go inside Google Tag Manager, add in the pixel, super easy. Uh, doesn't require much technical skill and it allows you to manage your pixels and tags very, very easily. So basically what that allows you to do is just set everything up super simply. Now, on the other hand, if you, for example, I'll show you an example of this, right? Um, so this is where the conversions are inside Google ads. And if you click on a new conversion, or in fact, let me just show you an existing one. So if you go in here, right, 
website. So you can track different ones, right? You can even, you can track phone calls. So if you guys are running phone call campaigns, you can track that. And then you can import it from Google Analytics, Salesforce, offline lead conversions. Uh, so basically like offline conversions, right? So GQuits. And that's, that's another whole topic. Uh, so typically you're going to click this website version and let's say you want to track purchases. Um, you can use the, you can use a certain assign a value to it. I typically click on one because, you know, unless you're doing e-commerce, because in e-commerce they can make multiple purchases, but sometimes, you know, in Okay, well, I don't know what, so, so there's basically um, this section where you can choose what conversions will count. So usually for info products, you want to do one because they might visit the thank you page twice and that might double trigger it. On the other hand, for e-com, you probably want to do every because, you know, if you have one purchase for like different, different basically um, products, right? So that for e-com, this for info, this, and then you can choose your window. I typically do 30 day click through one day view through attribution model. So this is typically only available for search and shopping ads, not really for YouTube. Um, so we always just keep it last click. And then what you do is you can set up the tags. Now, the reason I say set up Google Tag Manager is what all you gotta do is you go inside Google Tag Manager and you literally have to do three clicks and it's, it's set up, right? On the other hand, if you install the tag yourself without using Google Tag Manager, um, it's a lot more complicated where you got to have like, you know, you have like basically a bunch of different options on how to do it. So just trust me, set up Google Tag Manager and then setting up this is super easy because it basically um, gives you like the step by step instructions in here. So anyways, I don't want to get stuck in tracking because that will take hours. Um, but basically, my advice is set up Google Tag Manager and then it'll be super easy. Let's talk about setting up your first campaign. So the first thing you want to do is setting up your first campaign, right? Let's say you got your creative, you set up tracking, you have your Google Ads account set up, etc. The first thing you want to do is the, I would say like a good beginner targeting option is keyword targeting. And what keyword targeting is basically YouTube finds videos that are kind of related to certain keywords. So this would depend on the title, this would depend on the description, the tags in there. So there's like a bunch of factors that determine that, hey, this video is related to this keyword. What I like to do is I have a, I have like a system for this. All right, so what I like to do is what are the keywords? Like I, I like to brainstorm like 10 to 15 keywords that your target audience would search, right? This could These could be keywords you're using in Google search. These are keywords that you know are related. So for example, let's, let's give an example, right? Roofers. So with roofers, um, you're basically talking about pre problem, people who have problems with roof, roof, roofs. So roof repair, this would be a good one, right? And you kind of want to see how many views these videos have. Um, usually, this is a good sign, 1.4 million views, 1.9, 337,700K. So this is a niche that a lot of people are watching on YouTube, right? So you essentially have a lot of videos that you can target people who are interested in roofing. Um, so that's kind of the way I would do it. So I would look at this and I would look at the suggested keywords and you can go, you know, you can do a bunch of stuff in here, right? But now you have a bunch of keyword ideas. So what I would do is, you know, you want to see that these videos have 50 to 100k plus views. We do know that these are have like 300 to even million, 300,000 to a million views. And what I like to do is the first campaign, I like to add three to four keywords that are like closely knit together and related. So let's say, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here to the campaign level, I'm going to click this plus button, new campaign. And so this section, a lot of people get confused here because it's like, hey, what is a goal that, uh, what goal should I use? Now, what these goals do is they allow you to choose bidding types, but in and of itself, they don't really affect anything. So I all, always click this. I just click no goal, right? Because then that teaches you to like learn the various options. So I click no goal, I'll click video, video, and then 
you go into drive conversions because we're trying to get conversions here. Um, we really only use that. We don't really use the other uh, goals. So I like to label it. So I'll have like the targeting options, so roof repair keywords, and let's say the offer, I don't know, like let's say we're sending it to a certain offer, so roofing funnel or free roof funnel, free roof consultation funnel. Um, and then the, maybe like, let's say if you're having adding multiple ads, I'll do multiple ads in here just to be like, hey, I'm using multiple ads in here. Um, so you can test faster. So the in terms of bidding, I use maximize conversions to start with. And then once an account starts building some momentum after you've had 100 plus, maybe even 150 plus conversions, then you can start testing out target CPA. But at the beginning, you want to use maximize conversions. Um, $25 a day is a pretty good budget for campaigns. Obviously, your location, you can like go by uh, a lot of different options, including zip codes. So let's say. Which you cannot do on Facebook, by the way. Just throwing that in there. Yeah. <laughs> So you can literally like be like, hey, this this is this is where I used to live in the states when I was a kid. I'd be like, yep, I can target that zip code. So I like to use English um, just to make sure that you know if you're doing an English market because there are people who don't speak English in the U.S. Um, and then all of these inventory type, I like to do expanded inventory. Um, if your client's super sensitive and they're like, I don't want to show up in front of videos that are violent, et cetera, do standard or limited. But I don't really care um, because I just want my ads to show up as many places as possible, right? Like as long as it gets good performance. And so you can do these site links, but honestly, I haven't had the best results of them because you can basically send them to like other pages on your website. So you have to kind of have pages that are high converting. So I, I prefer to just have the one link to go to my uh, the page I want to go. And I usually will exclude TV screens. Tablets can perform, can't perform, but usually I just exclude TV screens to get frequency capping is I'll usually do four uh, per day at most. And then view would be like two per week is a good good kind of number, right? You don't want them to see your ad too much because you're going to be running different campaigns. So people are going to be hit by different campaigns, right? So that's why I do the two per week. Okay. I use standard. Responsive is another ad format. It's basically kind of like TrueView campaigns, but it is different ad formats. They show up on the home screen. They can show up like kind of like basically in different placements, but standard is like typical, normal, in-stream skippable ads. And this is a new feature that sometimes has worked well, sometimes hasn't. So just stick to this for now. This is more of a kind of like once you actually start scaling, you can start testing that. And then this is where you can choose the targeting. So obviously, you know, if you have certain demographics you want to target, you want to keep that in mind. If you're doing roofing, I imagine you're not going for 18 to 24. Uh, I imagine maybe excluding lower 50% is something you may want to do in terms of household income, which typically works well for us. And household income is available in the US. In terms of keywords, so let's say, let's say roof repair is our main keyword. And we want to, we want a few more, right? Just, just to see what hits and just to see what performs. So might add in, this one, and let's see. So I'm using the suggested search here. This usually works quite well. Um, roof repair flashing. So I have no idea about roof repair and what the different terms are, but typically what I like to do is keep them like grouped closely together. So I don't know if these are related to each other, like repair sealant and repair flashing, but basically you wanna make sure that, you know, if you're doing like, if to give you an example in a niche I understand better, let's say Amazon FBA, if you're doing like, uh, you know, keywords for that, you might have a, a group of keywords that are like Amazon FBA uh, cost or Amazon FBA budget, Amazon FBA, um, you know, price, right? Like things related to Amazon FBA plus price and that way, you know, keeping the tightly related in one campaign and then use another campaign for something like is Amazon FBA a scam or is Amazon Amazon FBA in work in 2020, right? Like having the keywords be related to each other. Now, then you basically will, let's say, 
you want to add the actual ad. So I'm just going to grab this video. Obviously, if you don't, you don't want to run a random video as an ad, but I just want to show you guys what it looks like. So you'll add in your URL. So let's say roofrepair.com. The display URL is what shows up and the call to action is free repair. And then there's, okay, that doesn't fit. So click here works well. Um, so let's say free roof repair. Okay. Free roof audit. Let's call that free roof audit. Okay. There you go. So now this is what it looks like on mobile. This is what it looks on desktop. You can see that, you know, this display URL, um, is what they see uh, as a URL right over here. So that's kind of how that works. Now, in terms of, um, a question, how would you do keyword targeting for B2B where the videos typically don't have as many views? Example targeting mortgage brokers. So what I would do for more niche audiences, which don't have that many views is custom audiences, right? And basically what custom audiences are, are you can target people on what they search on Google. So if on Google, they're searching, um, you know, certain search term that people in that industry search, then you can basically target them based on that. And then you can also have custom, uh, another type of custom audience, which is, it used to be called custom affinity, but now it's like part of this whole custom audience thing. And that's basically based on website URLs. So I can actually show you that really quickly. So you can go in here and create custom audiences. And so as you can see here, right, you can base them on people who are similar to uh, basically people who browse websites. So Google finds people that it thinks are similar to people who browse websites uh, that are, you know, whatever you are, you plug in. So let's say an industry uh, mortgage broker website. Brandon, do you know any like examples in this niche or any websites or maybe like mortgagebroker.com, right? So people, so you could literally like find like, let's say uh, some examples are mortgage brokers associations and plug that in. You could add in uh, mortgage broker education. So let's say there's a training program for mortgage brokers. You can put their URL in. And those are really good options for basically these kind of more niche niches. And then obviously you can also do it for people who search for certain terms. So then you can be like, uh, mortgage broker, it'll even give you search term ideas. Yes. Yeah, so you can basically your mortgage broker LTD. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever they search, you can add it in there. So, so yeah, United Wholesale Mortgage, um, the wholesale lender sites that brokers log into every day. Exactly. Those are all excellent examples, right? So it's essentially once you know your niche, this becomes like such this infinite options, right? Especially for, um, you know, there's so many things you could do with this. Uh, even like basically, um, any sort of training they do could work. So basically once you have this, right? So you've got the, you know, you've set up your campaigns four to five keywords in one ad group. Start up with one video ad, or if you have multiple, you can have two to three video ads in the same ad group. Uh, typically the campaign structure we use is one campaign, which has one ad group. And then that one ad group has two to three, maybe four video ads. That way we kind of start seeing which ads are working. Now, how do you analyze the results of your first campaigns, right? So the first campaign, let's say it let you let it run for three to four days. The first number you want to look at is click through rate. So do you, do you guys know what click through rate is? It's basically the percentage of people who see your ad that click on it. So if let's say a hundred people see your ad, then, you know, two people click on it, then that's a 2% click through rate. So anything above 1% is pretty decent. 1.5 to 2%, 0.5% is awesome. Cost per view, this varies, but typically, you know, it's a metric that shows you how expensive the niche is. Um, I would say, yeah, anything under 10 cents or even 20 cents is a less competitive niche. Landing page conversion rate is super important to understand. Um, so if you're sending 100 clicks, what percentage of them are converting into leads or what doing whatever action you want them to. And then obviously the biggest, most important numbers are what's your cost per lead, what's your cost per purchase, right? So if you're doing lead gen, then it's cost per lead, right? So it's like, hey, I've generated 100 leads you know, or sorry, I've, gen I've generated, like, let's say I've spent $100, I've generated 10 leads, that's a $10 cost per lead. Uh, obviously, that gives you an idea uh, of how your ads are performing and if they're profitable or not. And the other thing you can do is you can check where your ad showed up. 
which allows you to see if um, you know it's showing up in uh, sometimes what happens is they'll show up in front of videos that are completely irrelevant especially with certain targeting options and you can use exclusion lists so like I have, uh, they're like different exclusion lists online. I have one in my course as well. So what you do is you go into a campaign, you go in here, go to placements, go to where ad showed, um, all time. So placements and then where ad showed. And then it will show you which channels they showed up in front of. So what you want to watch out for are kids channels. So like, you know, those uh, channels that are for like five year old kids those will suck up your money and your budget, right? Those are the channels you put your kid in front of when you're just like, hey, I want to go do something, here's the TV, and then your ad shows up there. Obviously, they'll watch it, but they're not going to actually buy it, right? Because they're, you know, like, they don't have the money or the desire to buy it. That's important to know. Uh, okay, so, I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. That's, like, what you need to get started with YouTube ads. Um, obviously, there's, like, way more. There's, like, dozens of targeting options, tons of creative stuff. But that's, like, the very, very basics of that. Um, yeah, do you guys have any any questions for me? It might take a second for them to, to come through. Yeah, yeah, no rush. No rush, guys. While we're waiting for questions... Uh... Oh, here we go. We have one. Uh, can you do one example of a roofer video script? Is your roof falling in? <laughs> Hell damage got you down? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what what are the pain points because I've never like actually worked in the roofer niche. What's hmm. what's like a common pain point in that niche? Yeah, I'm in ad skills. Okay, so the roofer niche, right? Let's say uh, the first thing is you want to have a strong hook. So it's like, yeah, so with the roofing ad, I think probably what could work is Hey, did you know that 27, 35% of all deaths at home are caused by a falling roof? And did you know that most homeowners have a roof that hasn't been checked out and is in danger of collapsing because it's, because you, uh, let's say, because it's recommended you get your roof checked every once, uh, once every one year and most homeowners owners don't get their roofs checked ever. And because of that, X number of people get hurt each year or something. I don't know. Like create the problem and use that as a statement to grab their attention. And then you go into, hey, if you're a homeowner or somebody who, uh, you know, rents in a home and you you haven't had your roof, roof checked in a year, we actually provide a few free roof checking service. And all you got to do is click the link above or below and you'll basically fill out a quick form and we'll come over to your house and fix your roof or no check your roof so they the fr free first roof repair base oh no free first roof check and yeah that so and then basically you would be also have a social proof section which is like hey so if you guys haven't um if you guys it's not just me saying this here's what 10 of our happy clients have said on yelp on uh, google maps and then you screen share like you add in the reviews in the video so people can see the reviews. And then you have another call to action. Be like, hey, if you haven't um, gotten your roof checked in over a year, click the link above or below to go get your free roof check. So that, that was a tough one because I have no idea how the roof niche works. So, <laughs> um, Do you find that in-person videos convert better? Um, not necessarily, like in many cases they do, but in some cases, for example, we've had clients for voiceover videos, but like they have actors, but the actors aren't speaking. They're just like demonstrating. But then there's a voiceover that converted better than the actual um, in-person video with somebody talking. Let's see. In-market audience targeting. Yep, I use in-market audience targeting. Great audiences. Um, do we stack that with keywords? I don't like stacking stuff. It makes it too niche. It makes it hard to spend. And it's usually, for, for us, the game is make, like test a lot of audiences to find the ones that work at scale. Uh, you start like, you know, stacking audiences, it like gets too narrow and it's really, really hard to spend on that. Um, yeah. And what platforms lay, uh, what creative to run. So in terms of best creative to run, um, kind of bent over that, but the main gist of it is you need to have a strong hook. You need to make sure you grab their attention. You need to have voiceover or an actor. So either somebody speaking and then there being video footage or you need an actual actor in the video. And best targeting for agency ads. 
Um, so I, I mean, it depends on what kind of agency you are. So for example, if you're a dental agency, you would run, you know, ads based on custom audiences, based on, let's say, industry associations, industry vendor websites, et cetera, people would probably be able to, yeah, do that. Should we all, should we tell people to verbally click our ad? Yep, I mean, that's what we do. We literally tell people to click on the ad, click the link above or below. For custom affinity audiences, I keep one URL per campaign per ad group. So, and then I'll have different campaigns for different custom affinity uh, audiences, right? So I just keep it one URL per ad group and one ad group per campaign. Responsive ad option, uh, once you're at $1,000 a day or once you get plat two, you can test that out. For uh, for us, it's worked well in some cases and in other cases it hasn't. Most of the time, our in-stream has worked better. So I would say it's something you test, but not, uh, not until your stuff's already working profitable, right? And what do you think about running basically a VSL as a sidebar suggested video? Um, I, Discovery ads, are I think they're, I've seen this, people do this, but the cost per views are pretty high on them, unless you're in an uncompetitive niche. So in the internet marketing niche, it's kind of very expensive to do that. I would rather actually run an in-stream ad that gets them to click and then gets them onto uh, onto the website to opt in. Because doing that as a VSL is like, you are you know, let's say you're paying like 80 cents per view, it gets very expensive very fast, especially when there's not a clear call to action, right? They'll have to wait a long time to actually click on it. So 2D animated commercial created. Um, yeah, so I mean, you can use that for YouTube ads, absolutely. Um, just plug it in. You can create different variations. So you can create a shorter version, you can create a longer version, uh, you can try different background music, you can, you know, you can play around with a bunch of different little factors to create different variations. Typically, two really easy way to play around with it is video length. So have have a cut down version, right? Try like a 40 second version, maybe try like a two minute version and see how that works. Do you, do you see, I'm sure you've done a lot of split testing for different things. Uh, do you see men or women commit, uh, convert better? Depends on the niche. Okay. Can you give yeah. some examples maybe? Um, we have a client that sells detergent, like organic detergent. Uh, women convert better for him. Obviously, if they're sell, if you're, we had another client that's like in the bra niche and women obviously convert way better in that. Uh, and then we have other clients, you know, fitness niche that are, they're like guys and they're selling, you know, their whole message is for guys and they, they sell better to men. So yeah, it's, it's really dependent on the niche, right? So just test, have two, two different actors, maybe. Do this yeah. Now. Do you keep the same video with a different copy version? So if you're talking about voiceover video ads, yeah, I mean, you can test different voiceovers and different scripts with the uh, similar footage. And do you suggest, only suggest in-stream skippable ads. To start with, I only suggest in-stream skippable ads. You can test other ad formats as you start scaling, but to start with in-stream skippable ads with maximized conversions, target CPA, that's literally like 95% of your, what's gonna get you your results. So don't get distracted. Awesome, any other questions, guys? For folks that are running ads in, and they're using Go High Level as the, uh, the back end, um, I literally didn't change anything when I started running mortgage. When I, when I transitioned over from Facebook to YouTube, I literally just changed the top of the funnel. And then the link that I send people to through the videos is my high level funnel. So uh, if that's what I'm, I, I'm sure a lot of folks in here um, are running. Um, I guess if you had text messages that go out that say, hey, you saw us on, you know, thanks for opting in on our Facebook ad, you would change that to YouTube. But um, if you're, if you've had that generic enough, then um, you know you literally don't have to change anything on the back end. Uh, yeah, in fun. general, the rule is Facebook is stricter on compliance than YouTube. On YouTube, you can get away with saying making more claims. Like it's actually ridiculous the some of the <laughs> claims you can make on YouTube and still run can literally yeah like Facebook is just so much more uh, difficult to work with in terms of compliance. Uh, examples of landing pages that convert best. Um, I mean, this depends on the niche and uh, I can think of a bunch of client ones, but I can't really share them. I don't want to share those, but uh, yeah, I think if you guys want more resources, so I actually have a YouTube channel. Um, if you YouTube it, 
it's called Shash Singh Links Digital University, and you can basically go check that out. Tons of videos in there. They go into different targeting options, creative ideas, funnels, etc. And then we also got a Facebook group, which is called YouTube Ad Buyers, which you can check out where you know we answer questions and me and my team are involved and there are a lot of smart people in there. And then obviously, if you guys are looking for like a step-by-step -step training and you guys want to really uh, basically take things to the next level, we also have a paid YouTube ads course. Uh, Brandon actually is part of that. And that the URL for that is linksyoutube.com slash Brandon. So that's a cool place to check out. And okay, there was another question. What parts of the video would you test for the biggest changes? First five seconds. Yep, absolutely. I would check, I would test the hook. So the hook is super important here. Um, you wanna always test like three to four different hooks with the main body kind of staying the same. Yeah, so that uh, Brandon just dropped a link in for if you wanna check out the course. So basically what that is, is there's a link um, and if you click on the button on that, you'll actually go to a Calendly booking and there's a video in there that goes over everything that's in the course. So it gives you an outline of the course, it gives you the price, it gives you uh, everything. And then if you if you like it, then you can book a call with my business partner, Alex, who who will guide you through it and basically you know figure out if uh, what parts of the course will be useful, et cetera. And then the YouTube channel is awesome if you're just starting out because there's we just upload like Four, I write now three times a week. We're going to increase that to 4x a week. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Brandon, you got anything to say? Yeah, I mean, I just, it's been invaluable in, in uh, saving my business because I had my, uh, my business manager uh, banned permanently. You know, and I, they wouldn't even tell me why. They give me like, here's an array of 10 possible reasons we shut you down. And they, and they just won't tell me what's wrong, you know? Yeah. So it's they really it's almost disrespectful towards the advertisers, you know, and just yeah. with Google, it's been a an interesting experience because like I don't run into the same issues. Um, my ads get approved within you know like twenty to thirty seconds as it's running. You know, there's not this day long or hour long review process that goes into play. Um, targeting options are are a little bit more granular because uh, with Facebook, uh, if you're running anything in a special ads category like I am, like in the mortgage real estate niche, Facebook has a minimum 30 mile radius that you can go. Whereas uh, Shash has just shown you, um, you can actually target uh, individual zip codes still, which is, is pretty cool. Um, the interface has been, you know, super, super easy to, and intuitive to use. When, if, you've, if you've run Facebook ads before, it's like the three tiered system, right? With um, um, ads, ad campaigns, um, and then campaigns or ad groups. Um, tracking was the only kind of learning curve that really, you know, smacked me a little bit um, because I I took Shasha's advice and wanted to start using GTM for everything because I think GTM is is just awesome. It's like Pixel on steroids. It's not just Pixel. It's like you can put any tracking mechanism you want in there, and then you just it's all consolidated in one place. You can organize and tag into folders, um, and it's just. Uh, it's it's more um, streamlined. So if you're looking to scale or you're taking on you know a lot of clients, it's going to be an invaluable tool. Um, but yeah, yeah, this... that that's actually mm -hmm. something where uh, people have struggled with is because Google's conversion tracking side is a lot more um, because there's Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, there's Google Ads tracking. There's like all these different things. While with Facebook, typically most people use Facebook Pixel. Um, obviously now, though, you got to use more than that. So uh, because of that, we're actually redoing our course to like have training on Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, like everything tracking related. Um, and ho hopefully that will be out in the next uh, mm -hmm. next couple of weeks. Like we have the basic, like, you know, here's how you set up tracking. Here's how you set up Google Click IDs. We even have Hyro set up, which is a tracking tool, but we want to make it like better than any tracking course out there, which is, mm -hmm. uh, which is the aim. But yeah, guys, um, I really enjoyed being on here. Um, I really encourage you guys to give YouTube uh, a shot. And uh, yeah, in, in terms of tracking stuff, one of the great investments we've made is find a really good like tracking expert for our stuff because it's just, you can get super deep into it, but it's not really worth your time um, when you can just find somebody who can take care of it in a couple hours while you're gonna take 20 hours to do it. That's That's been my, one of my lessons I've done uh, is we have a really good tracking specialist in house who just takes care of it. And he's actually creating the tracking course right now for us just because it's, yeah, it's, it's so worth it. Um, 
Now, the other thing, the lead intent, I think somebody asked about that. Lead, lead intent is great on YouTube. I think it's, yeah, it's really good, especially if you're targeting people who are like watching certain types of videos, then, you know, they're already interested. Yeah, I was going to comment on that. It's going to be higher um, because people are actually searching for the word realtor. So YouTube is like this beautiful blend of Google ads and Facebook ads because you're getting the benefit of saying like, I want to show my ad to people that are actually searching for something, right? Um, but also interruptive marketing because we're, we're getting into their videos and you know creating these skippable ads. Whereas you know Facebook, it's hard to get that intent, you know, because they're not people don't go onto Facebook to search for roofing stuff. They don't, you know, they might watch your video for fifty percent of it, and then that's that kind of signifies like maybe they have some interest, you know, or they might watch it through seventy five percent, but you don't really know because they're not really searching for it. But on YouTube, it's powered by Google. Um, and so you have that keyword data. People are searching for realtor out there. I'm like, boom, realtor is one of the top keywords um, for mortgage. Because you're not going to get on Google and search for a realtor if you're not trying to buy a house you know, or sell a house. So it's, I, I found it to be really awesome. Um, and I'll have more conversion data, more back-end conversion data as we go. Because I've only been running this for about uh, a month. And I think we've generated 300-something leads one of our clients um that's awesome yeah, YouTube, is, youtube is rocking dude um, yeah and yeah the the cool thing is like with youtube you can target people who are any stage of the funnel right they're like depending on intent you can target people who are searching for it you can target people who are interested in the subject you can target very cold big audiences right so it's like your your ability to target based on where people are at is very strong it's funny because like I ran my first ad, I only had watched maybe the first twenty percent of your training, and I already started to get results um, with the first ad. Like it was blowing up, and I was completely not optimized. Didn't follow through and do any of the rest of the training yet. You know, I still have to finish some of the training. <laughs> um, shame on me for not finishing it. But uh, yeah, it's a lot, it, lot of stuff, a lot of stuff in there. So it'll it'll improve your results way more because like the first twenty percent is like. Kind of like the basic stuff. So. Like get the train moving, yeah. you know, or get, get yeah. the ball moving and then you can make these corrections and optimizations as you learn more and go, you know. Exactly. Most people are like too afraid to get started or to try it. Um, I was forced into it. <laughs> it was that or lose my clients, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. those business managers shut down suck. We had one, we got it back, but man, it was scary. <laughs> it's like, uh, just Google cool. treats you better. Yeah, for Google sure. Google is a tender lover. Facebook is not. <laughs> cool. All, All right. right. So, I, yeah, I think that's um, anything else you want to discuss or chat about, or I think we can pretty much wrap it up. Yeah, if you guys have questions, comments, um, go ahead and drop them. You might think of them after the fact, and I know the majority. Yeah, I'll be in the group. Just tag me. Like, I'm in the group as well, the your agency group, so I can uh, just tag me in there, and I can answer those questions. And, and just, I know the majority of people um, who watch this are going to watch it after this. So if you have questions. Yeah, we'll have the recording. Yeah, and we will record this. And I believe Shasha's going to drop it on YouTube as well. So mm -hmm. cool, cool. All right. Well, I, I appreciate you joining us, um, taking the time to, to do some training for us today. And I hope everybody got value out of this. Yeah, cheers, guys. I really enjoyed being on here. All right. Take care now.